Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and the, my videos on YouTube uh, with your fellow trading colleagues as it helps support the channel and gets the quality content out um, to those that need it as well as you know boost the uh, the rankings on uh, YouTube so um, trading 180 process um, if you're new is just basically applying fundamental and technical analysis to establish our directional bias and then applying our technical analysis strategy supply and demand strategies to time trade entries risk management and establish profit targets we use the best of both uh, fundamental and technical analysis to really kind of make the best trading decisions this is not one versus the other this is um using um you know combined um fundamentals and technicals um to really uh, get the results uh, that we're uh, achieving so uh moving on to this week's um week ahead and um trading economics if you go there tradingeconomics.com a great website um uh, so in the week ahead, the U.S. stocks will try to regain some footing after closing in the negative territory. That's the stocks with investors looking at signs that inflation pressures are easing. So that's that's a big thing, right? So inflation pressures, and we'll get into that um, a bit later. Also, inflation rate figures for May will take a spotlight alongside external trade data and consumer confidence. Also, markets will closely follow central bank meetings in the euro area. Um, Australia and China CPI and services uh, uh, PMI. So, um, just uh, I guess I'll read out some of the uh, some of the paragraphs. So, in the U.S., economic Canada is relatively light with the CPI report. So, all eyes are going to be on that because ultimately the central banks want the um, inflation to come down. Um, if inflation keeps rising, um, then it creates a headache, uh, an economic headache as well as um, just an inflation uh, threat, right? Um, uh, when it comes to, uh, um, I guess, the uh, central bank not meeting their 2% target. So you've got trade balance, exports, imports, and the preliminary uh, Michigan consumer sentiment uh, taking spotlight. So trade balance is also something that you should uh, keep an eye on as it is a reflection or can be a reflection on uh, GDP, gross domestic product. Um, elsewhere in America, we've got, um, it would be interesting to follow unemployment figures for Canada, trade data uh, for Canada and Brazil, inflation rates for those countries. So yeah, definitely unemployment and um, trade data. In Europe, the ECB will be deciding on monetary policy with markets expecting the conclusion of the largest, sorry, large scale asset purchases and confirmation of uh, rate hike in July. Again, money markets have now fully priced in a 25 basis points interest rate hike at the July meeting with around 124 basis points of tightening priced by the end of the year to tame record inflation, right? So central banks are forced to hike rates. Um, going on, moving on to the Reserve Bank of Australia. So monetary policy uh, front, Reserve Bank of Australia are seen raising the official cash rate by 25 basis points for a second straight meeting and the Reserve Bank of India, which we don't uh, really trade the uh, Indian, is it the rupee? Um, and then China have got their external trade data, um, which is always uh, worth, I guess, looking out for simply because of the global growth situation. And in Japan, all eyes are on final GDP growth estimates for quarter one, uh, which is going to be, I think the, 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 the main data has already come out. The number is already known and been priced in. So I don't think that's going to be um, really as important or a market mover unless the numbers are, you know, way off but um let's get into some of the uh the charts and uh, some uh, more fundamental analysis uh, so starting off on the dollar index and dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength oh what's happened here sorry i've gone back um let me go forward again one second uh, let me open up all of these all right um 
All right, so uh, yeah, dollar index and really understanding our, our fundamental bias is key to understanding, you know, which, which way we want to be buying over the medium to long term, right? In the short term, generally, um, it's very difficult to trade um, um, because markets move as a result of uh, liquidity, right? Liquidity hunting, uh, but but the the the, the the, the big money eventually reveal their hand over the medium to long term and you'll see prices you know uh, you know uh, make their way higher right so um, if you've been watching my uh, videos for any length of time you've pretty much never heard me say that I'm going to go short on the pound I'm um, sorry on the pound on the, on the dollar you've never heard me say I'm going to go short on the uh, on, on the dollar this year go back through all my uh, Sunday videos and any trading videos that I've made I've always pretty much been a buyer of the dollar and you can see where the trend has been and this isn't you know uh, rocket science it's just if you understand what drives the market then you can see you know what is likely to happen yeah um to the markets right we've had a bit of a pullback obviously but does that mean that the trend is over or of course not um so uh, my bias again is still to buy the dollar not necessarily against every single currency but um against the uh, the weakest currencies and the most uh, devalued or depreciating currencies and so um we did have some positive news which confirms um our you know buying bias or my buying bias because this isn't fundamental uh, this isn't a uh, um uh, financial advice but a uh, tight us jobs uh, market will keep the 50 basis points hike hikes coming so the u.s economy added more jobs than expected in may but with nearly two job vacancies available for every unemployed american the numbers would be even stronger if there was a better supply of quality labor this is both a constraint on growth while contributing to ongoing elevated inflation via higher wages 50 base point um, hikes remain at the default for june and july so the central bank is still looking to appreciate their currency now will it appreciate is it a guarantee that it will appreciate of course not because there are other factors um such as other central banks looking to um strengthen their currency right so just because you know the the dollar is is, is hiking doesn't mean that you know we're going to go to the moon right it's all about you know understanding divergences um and in fact within the next probably few months i'm probably maybe switching my bias to a more neutral um bias on the dollar and maybe start to take some sell trades on the dollar against um, some various currencies but um, ultimately for now I'm still a buyer of the uh, dollar so just looking for any pullbacks not necessarily on the, on the dollar index but if prices do pull back down into um, any demand zones and then start to look like they're uh, moving higher that can use that as confluence on uh, other currencies um, such as maybe the dollar yen or maybe the dollar swiss um, uh, to look for uh, some buy trades right so my bias is definitely still to buy the dollar do i know that it's going to go up this week no nobody knows um and if it does go down um that's fine because then it just offers an opportunity to buy the dollar for uh, cheaper because nothing fundamentally has changed right if you understand that you know the, the market thinks that you know 50 base point hikes remain the default for june and july then ultimately if prices do come down right you know at least you know um uh, for, for this month then june and july uh, we should see um you know a bit of upside so it's just the market really looking to buy for cheap um as prices come down which is basically what i'm doing and then you've got a lot more upside potential right if, what's the point in buying up here when you know that this is an expensive area if you, you can buy it down here and you've got a lot more upside potential right that's pretty much how you know it, it works in the uh in the long term um is understanding good risk reward and also location and where you are and where the bargains are right so my bias is to the upside if you do want to be a seller of the dollar then uh, there is um, a supply zone uh, there for your uh, for your confluence uh moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen this was a nice profitable trade um for me i got involved in this actually down at the one two six nineties this was a stop hunt which basically goes beyond really this the scope of this video i don't really talk about stop hunts and how to trade stop hunts that's uh you know um 
uh, part of the uh, private members group and in fact um, I guess just to kind of show you guys um, and remind you guys really about the um, the actual uh, mentoring which is going to be open uh, tomorrow if you're watching this on a Sunday the 6th to the 10th of June um, I'm going to be doing an intake of um, of um, those of you who want to join and um, really showing you the, the complete and ultimate um, I guess course when it comes to fundamental analysis and uh, technical analysis and you'll learn um, you'll get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet which uh, ranks currencies according to strength and weakness but not only that you'll understand um, you know risk on and risk off as a scale you'll also understand the currency value cycle and why um, you know currencies that are typically or maybe strong or ranked one two and three um, are likely to continue appreciating or devaluing and why for example currencies that are ranked six sevens and eights on a on the fundamental spreadsheet uh, may continue to devalue or actually is it you know a bargain because not every single currency can stay strong forever right and not every single currency is going to devalue forever so um you know, a lot of the um, YouTube videos I've been releasing lately. So, for example, that Forex, you know, supply and demand, smart money stuff that I've been doing um, just to kind of catch your attention. And uh, I think I make the point that, you know, how can you be really talking about smart money if you don't talk about fundamental analysis? Because smart money literally make their dis buying and selling decisions in the medium to long term based off of uh, fundamental analysis right and risk sentiment and um, these are you know really kind of short clips 12 minute 15 minute uh, videos from live sessions that we have and that I have on a Wednesday with uh, traders and also as well um, those traders um, have done um, some interviews for me um, really going over um, their results as well as um, you know their experience with trading 180 so again if you do want to um, join trading 180 there's a video there you can watch exactly what it's all about and um, uh, again my enrollment will start from the 6th and end on the 10th um, of June so going back to really the uh, the, the, the the dollar yen and also as well just just kind of show you as well some of the stuff that you'll get in some of the trading videos um this was a trading video from the 30th of may and uh, where i actually talk uh, to the guys in the room about the uh, trade setup so here it was it was the dollar yen uh, stop hunt setup and i uh if you can hear it uh then i'll show you that i was actually in this trade expensive uh, but where we are now um, is interesting because I think that this was part of a, uh, of a stop hunt. So I am actually in this trade. If you look at that level there, all right, and then you see prices kind of. Anyway, it's not getting into the strategy, but um, but yeah. So that was the dollar yen um, on the daily. Understanding that that was a stop hunt, and uh, again I was in that trade, which was very profitable which ended up you know hitting targets you know above that was about three three hundred or so pips on um on a trade um and entered into three positions so again it was understanding the the the, the, the bias that we had on buying the dollar and really kind of selling the yen and understanding that this ended up being a bargain right bargain price and there are bargains beyond you know supply and demand zones such as stop hunts so with that being said um it's been a great week really a really good week uh, a lot of my trades ended up uh, working out and so um where are we now so right now this is obviously this price is seen as a bargain Again, my bias is to the uh, the upside um, but we are we are now in an expensive area and so there is the opportunity to look for pullbacks but i don't really like that i'd really rather prices come down to the 127 again if you are looking for sell trades um now would be a great time or great technically anyway i wouldn't necessarily say that's a great fundamental trade but again there are reasons to buy the the the, the yen um potentially uh, the central bank may be starting to or maybe but they probably are looking to try to cap uh, the valuation of the um 
the, the Japanese yen so and try and intervene in the markets because of uh, you know rising inflation so with that being said um, this may be an opportunity to, to sell but uh, my, again, my bias would be more to the upside and look for buy trades so I'm out of that trade and I might have to wait a few weeks or maybe a month or two to get back in um, who knows but the, the opportunity for me until prices prove that there's higher highs there and maybe a pullback into that zone then I will look for potential you know buy trade around that 130 if it does maybe start to reach the 13 133s or just just above that right um, so yeah that's the dollar yen um, moving to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss um, so prices didn't quite come down into a demand zone, which is okay, right? Because none of us, nobody knows whether, you know, prices will come down into demand zone. But there is, you know, the market has seen that this area here is actually demand, right? So at the absolute low, the 0 0.954 area was seen as a bit of demand. Not strong demand, mind you, because prices haven't really gone anywhere. But there's definitely um, some buying going on here. Um, and again, there was an opportunity to short within that. Um, supply zone again what you would do is look at higher time frame um, zones and then go down into the lower time frames and see if there are you know shorting opportunities in and around that zone there um, but my bias really wasn't to the uh, to the short side it's more to the long side so um, for now I think for now there is a there is a demand zone here but it's not a strong area of demand not really too keen on it um, I'd rather see prices either come down to this zone it's 95 area before going long or prices making new highs then pulling back and then looking for you know a bit of a demand uh, zone there so proof of demand so proof of value is what I'm really looking for on this currency pair so as it stands nothing really for me but there are opportunities to potentially look for short trades here or long trades if prices do come down into this demand zone in 95 uh, 0 0.9522 area moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, the Canadian dollar has been strengthening um, the Canadian dollar ended up uh, hiking rates we're making lower lows and uh, again not really a pair that I'm interested in uh, but I do think that um, Hmm. Actually, I don't really have a, a, a really a, a, a bias on this either way. Prices could go higher, prices could go lower, right? When you've got two central banks are looking to high crates, it's a it's a bit of a difficult trade, and um, so you know not every uh, single pair can be or should be traded, right? Because you're really looking for either again divergences where you're trading strong versus weak or appreciating currencies versus depreciating currencies or convergences where you've got a, a strong currency that's about to get you know devalued and uh, a devalued currency that may start to appreciate in value this is you know two central banks that are looking to hike rates and are hiking rates aggressively so for me it's um it's a harder trade to predict in the medium term short, short definitely in the short term but medium to long term so for me can't really see where the bargain is or where the, the market might think there is a bargain so for me it's not really a trade but if you do want to get involved in this um, in this uh, in this trade then I would probably say now if you're looking to buy the US dollar if you're looking to sell the US dollar and buy the CAD then those are going to be your two areas to look for this week if not then you're looking at a short trade up here or maybe even further down in fact I do think that that zone right there, the one two fours, might actually be quite decent for a uh, for a buy trade. Technically, of course, not necessarily fundamentally. So those are really the areas, but nothing really, uh, not really a pair that I'm looking at trading. Um, it's not on my list. New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar again, similar thing. I'm not looking to trade this currency pair to central banks looking to high crates although there has been opportunities intradays to get short on that short on there as well um so nothing's really changed other than um, from a buying perspective if you want to buy the new zealand dollar that's okay if you want to sell um i guess this level's touched a couple of times so i wouldn't look for that to really hold i would probably say technically this is a better level the 0 0.675 area before uh, getting um 
before getting short. Um, if you are looking to buy the New Zealand dollar, though, again, I'd probably say the better area to look for buy trades is going to be from a daily supply and demand zone perspective is going to be really at the lows the 0.6250 uh, to 0.63 area i think is decent for a, uh, a buy trade again two central banks looking to hike rates not really my cup of tea when it comes to um uh buying uh the um these two currencies so pound dollar now this has caught my interest and in fact i am in uh, this trade from last week if you look at watch last week's video um, i actually say that i'm in this trade um last week and this now has been a profitable trade i'm looking for really targets to come down to um because i entered multiple positions i've got a few positions uh, that i'm looking at uh, trading and one will be like for example the uh, fifty percent of the uh, of the range and I'll take you know some other profits off here uh, and then I've got um, another one down at the at at the lows right so um, when you enter into trades or when I enter into trades I enter into multiple positions and um, because then it makes really it gives you the flexibility to take profit off profits off as you you know as we go right so um, so far so good you know from the really the highs to the lows there's about 200 pips there was about 200 pips in that obviously I didn't pick off the highs and didn't take it off at the lows but just from the price movement and I do expect prices to really kind of continue to go lower on this as well yes the central bank of england bank of england are hiking but 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 they are facing problems so uh, bank of england uk food prices surging most in a decade uh, signals more pain ahead so retailers say the cost of fresh food is rising rapidly and the bank of england governor has warned of apocalyptic uh, very scary words uh, consequences for poor so uk consumers are being urged to brace for inflation getting worse before it gets better a soaring cost forced retailers to keep raising prices and the bleak warning uh, came as a in a survey by the british retail consortium which said fresh food prices are now rising at their fastest pace in a decade why is that important because then people were not looking to spend money on anything else if they're spending money on just you know the basic necessities right food uh you know shelter energy prices you know and things like that right where i'm not going I, maybe i can't go on holiday this year the average person can't go on holiday this year maybe we used to take one holiday a year now we can't take any because we haven't got any um extra income because it's being eaten up with inflation and this is what i guess all countries are struggling with but the uh uk probably more than most hence the reason why um Again, if you've been watching and following along with my videos, not just this video and my weekend videos, but just from um, my overall bias on um, my intro, um, intro week, I guess, videos on my YouTube channel, um, you'll see that I've been, um, you know, my bias has been to go short on the, the, the pound, right? I've been saying short the pound for a few months now. And um, yeah, so just waiting for pullbacks, right? So my bias is, you know, uh, to short the pound this was the opportunity to get short and then now hopefully we can still continue to uh to go uh lower as um there are other countries that are coping with the inflation and cost of living crisis better the us being one of them so uh for me that's really my bias if you do want to get long on this then there is a quite a wide demand zone i'm going to draw it from here yeah um there is an area there i would probably say maybe somewhere around here you'd be about that about that fair value area 50 percent of that would be a decent area to look for any kind of long trades if you think that obviously the pound is a bargain for me i don't um obviously you'll be trading against me right um i'm taking the, the short position you'll be taking the long position if you're going long then of course anything can happen right prices can go a higher from there there's a there's you know um not to say it's going to go straight down to targets but um uh, for me i'm more looking at you know hundreds of pips to the downsides not looking at uh, maybe 20 30 pips off of that you know off of that zone if it bounces up so um while there's room for both of us to make money uh, of course but uh, for me i think i think the path of least resistance is to the downside so um pound dollar i am uh, short on that one moving to the euro dollar euro dollar and the euro dollar um 
uh, is again a bit of a tricky one. Although I am long on the dollar, my bias now has really kind of changed uh, to be more neutral on the dollar. Um, sorry, on the, on the euro simply because of the, um, the 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 hikes. I think I've, I do have a, I guess a, a short bias on the euro when it comes to certain things. I I, I guess it's beyond the scope of this video, but um, I think in the short term, the the euro should probably want to go a bit higher. How it gets there, I don't know whether it's going to go straight up, you know, uh, parabolically or whether it's going to slow grind up. But first of all, um, the rate hike is probably being priced in or has been priced in um, already. I do think that there is um, scoop, scope for it to probably come to the 108s, 109s. We were confirming this with some bank analysis uh, privately. Um, uh, in in our private members group around around this area, but I do think that there is the upside is probably capped, and I think it's probably going to be capped somewhere around here. So, in the short term, probably might see prices go higher um, as the market you know starts to price in um, you know rate hikes for the euro, and also there's been talk of the euro actually you know hiking a bit further, right, hiking a bit more. So. Um, Eurozone inflation hits record as ECB miles of how quickly to hike, but also the size of that hike. So Eurozone inflation accelerated to an all-time high, intensifying the debate at the European Central Bank uh, about how rapidly to raise rates from record lows. So inflation, again, uh, just like everywhere else, putting pressure on central banks to hike rates. But um, I think that the, uh, um, the Euro does have issues. Um, but those issues are kind of being ignored uh, economically. But I do think that if, if the um, if from a, from an economic perspective, if GDP doesn't come in or is able to support those hikes, then I do think that the euro would eventually uh, come down. Uh, but I just think in the short term, in the next week or two, or up until you know the the um, the uh, the hikes are announced and what the central bank is planning. Probably my bias would be more euro strength, but limited strength. So, with that being said, um, euro dollar, um, not for now. Although I have a short bias, I'm not really looking to take this trade or anything right right this minute until really the dust kind of settles on on what their economy is saying um, and what the central bank has to do. So, um, buy trades. Probably looking at this zone or maybe just below that the 106s 105.80s around here um, if you're looking to sell I'd probably wait for prices to come beyond that 108 so maybe 109s um, 109.50s towards the top end I think of this uh, of this uh, price um, of this uh, supply zone uh, moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and um, Aussie dollar again not really a pair I'm interested in Although the Australian dollar has been uh, grinding higher, making higher highs, and that's really due to, again, the uh, RBA looking to um, uh, hike rates and the market pricing in that uh, rate hike. And so um, this is a decent area to look for short trades, but how far down can prices really go? Um, there is, and I guess I'll draw the, the, this uh, supply zone. I think I'd have to probably draw it around here. Because there is actually a demand zone here as well. In fact, that's hidden demand. Uh, demand. Um, so you can look for intraday long trades again in and around here if you're looking. If you think that the uh, Australian dollar is a bargain at that price, me personally, if I was looking to buy this, it'd have to be somewhere around that seventy uh, point. Uh, uh, sorry, zero point. 705 area before looking at getting long as that's more of more fair value if you consider this to be um, a bargain or expensive area depending on you know uh, uh, your your bias whether you're buying the base of the quote currency um, this could start to look to um, auction or what most people would consider range you know go range bound and so in between an expensive and a bargain area You've got fair value, so I think more fair value for me would be a better buying opportunity. Um, but either way, not really a pair that I'm interested in. 
prices could go either way in the medium to long term. But I do think that when the dollar is a potential sell, um, which could be happening when I say soon, maybe in the next few months or so, if the uh, if 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 there is a, I guess a global recovery, China starts to come out of their lockdowns and uh, gets a, a, a more of a handle on their COVID, then I do think the Australian dollar against the US dollar may be a very good buy. So um, I'm keeping my eye out on that fundamentally. Um, dollar australian dollar us dollar and again i wanted to get involved in this but just couldn't right uh, prices just didn't pull back i was saying this the week before uh, my bias was to the long side again you can check the records and you can see you know pretty much what's happened since then um uh, looking at any pullbacks unfortunately it's gonna have to be you know move really back down to that zone there or if prices do make higher highs and then a pull back into a demand zone um i do think that obviously that this is going to be this is definitely an expensive area so there is a opportunity to potentially short but you'd have to really understand why you're buying the uh that you think that the, the yen is a is a bargain over the uh australian dollar of course we've got risk uh risk off uh, sentiment potentially uh, happening but um, uh, I think uh, th there have to be new risk off because everything really risk off is kind of been priced in so for example price isn't really reacting to um, the Ukraine and Russia conflict right that that used to be a thing and now it's not um, so from that perspective you know it's not the price isn't really reacting to that unless there's going to be new developments there's escalations and things like that um, it just looks like that the market is more focused on um, fundamental analysis the, uh, the the monetary policy uh, side of things and uh, you're seeing that reflected in price which is basically what um, how I've been trading and what I've been focused on but um, but yeah let's see what happens with that understand that that is an area to potentially look for uh, uh, for sell trades as well technically but just not if i'm not really a buyer of the japanese yen um for now anyway there are i know there is a nuanced idea that i'm exploring um but let's see uh, again it's beyond the scope of this video and gold and gold is again been really a strange one you would think with all the inflation that's going on in the world that gold would be probably somewhere around its you know all-time all highs but um don't know whether their gold is being suppressed it does have a, it does have an opportunity to actually uh um you know go higher especially if the dollar starts to come off the boil and um uh, really kind of um, uh, sell off within the next couple of months uh so but for now i think with a decent dollar it's going to be very difficult for gold at the moment it just seems like money really isn't going into gold um right now but again typically we should understand that gold should be a buy so any kind of pullbacks get into a zone i think that if price is coming down into that 1800 area i think that is a very nice buy um i probably might be looking for buy around here but um as if it does no idea whether it will it could go higher of course um as, as gold is a hedge against inflation and but let's see what happens if inflation i guess i would assume the logic would be if inflation starts to come down in the us then gold should want to you know come down right but then you also if that's the case then and the central banks don't necessarily have to hike as much then the dollar should want to fall and then gold could go higher so it depends on really what the market is really focused on but again this is it's, these are ideas that are beyond the scope of this uh, um of this video this is what i'll be discussing with uh, my private members and again you've only got uh four days to really kind of join as a reminder um so enrollment starts really tomorrow the 6th of june to the 10th um and then after that um i will I'll probably be closed till maybe september october as i like to keep you know the groups um small and kind of focused so um yeah again um that brings us to the end of uh, this week's video uh, thank you for all the kind comments as well for my videos and um i will try and get back to each and every one of your comments guys have a great trading week and uh, take care speak soon